Hey guys, Mr. T here. This is another video. This one is on solving linear equations. So before we get into how you solve them, you need to understand what a linear equation is. So an equation is a set of maths with an equal sign, basically, and involving variables. But a linear equation, so the linear part of this um, dictates that the variable is only raised to the power of 1. So that's very important. So for example, 3x plus 4 is equal to 2. There's no exponent written over x, so it is to the power of 1. So that is a linear equation. Here, the variable is x. There's no power written there, so it's to the power of 1. So that is a linear equation. x squared plus 5x is equal to 7. This is to the power of 2. It's no longer to the power of 1. So this is not linear. Even though there is an x to the power of 1 there, having an x to the power of 2 somewhere in the equation immediately makes it non-linear. So um, you can solve linear equations using these rules as long as they look like this, the variables to the power of 1. So because equations contain an equal sign, that allows you to find the value of the variable for a solution, and finding a solution is solving. So to solve linear equations, 1, you expand any brackets and collect like terms if needed. Uh, two, remove unknowns from one side of the equation. You can't find what the unknown is if you've got um, the unknown on both sides of your equation. You need to get rid of the unknowns on one side and have them on, on the other side. So you need to have a number that you know is equal to an unknown to be able to find the solution. Step three, use inverse operations to isolate the unknown and keep balance. You want to end up with your equation saying the unknown, say for example x is equal to 2 for example, because that's the solution. You are saying that the variable x is equal to 2 to make this equation work, to satisfy the equation. So you need to isolate the unknown. You need to get the unknown on one side, okay? That's the whole goal of solving equations. And lastly, it's good to double check that your solution that you found actually satisfies the equation. So when you found what x is, plug that number in to the original equation and make sure it does equal what it originally said. So to see how some of these, um, these rules work, let's do some examples. So solve for x. x over 3, add 2 is equal to negative 2. So we've got no brackets here, so we don't need to do step 1. Step two is remove unknowns from one, um, from one side of the equation. You only do that if you've got unknowns on both sides. But I've only got the unknown x on the left-hand side, so I don't need to worry about step two. So we're up to step three, using inverse operations to isolate the unknown and keep balance. So what that means is I need to go in reverse bed mass order and get rid of all the stuff around x until you've got x is equal to something. So bed mass is brackets, exponents, division, multiplication, addition, subtraction. We have to go in reverse bed mass order and get rid of all of the terms surrounding x in that order. So reverse bed mass, the last letter of um, bed mass is s. Do we have any subtractions? Well, no. So we go in reverse. A, we've got an addition, plus 2. So we need to get rid of the plus 2 with an inverse operation. What's the inverse of adding 2? Taking 2. So we need to take 2 from both sides to keep balance and avoid changing the question. So we are not doing anything with the divide by 3. We are doing something with the add 2 by taking 2. That's the inverse operation of adding 2. Because I want to get rid of the plus 2, I need to take 2 to get rid of it. But to keep balance, I need to take 2 on the other side as well. So we've got negative 2 on the right side, but I'm also taking 2 again to keep balance. So I like to draw the inverse operations in blocks, or bricks. This is a brick method, what I'm doing here, so that you can double check that you are balanced on both sides of the equal sign. So this is what I'm going to do. Now I'm going to write what the result of that is. I haven't done anything with x on 3, so leave it there. I've got plus 2, take 2. Positive 2, take 2 is going to be 0, so I don't need to write it. So I've got the equal sign left. And negative 2, take 2 is negative 4. 
So I got rid of the plus 2 on the left hand side by taking 2 from both sides. The inverse operation. Now I need to get rid of the divide by 3. What's the opposite of dividing something by 3? Timesing by 3. So I'm going to go 3 lots of, and put that in a brick, x on 3 is equal to negative 4, and we are timesing that by 3 as well. So we can write um, times by 3 in a box here. So 3 times by x on 3, that's going to be 3x on 3 is going to be um, and the right hand side is going to be negative 4 times by 3, negative 12. 3 on the top and 3 on the bottom, that cancels out to x only, so this brings us to the last step of the equation. 3 on 3 is 1, that cancels out, so you're left with x on the left hand side is equal to negative 12. Okay, so that is um, an example of applying the rules, um, the inverse operations. It's good to write your steps as you go, so you don't skip anything. And so you can double check that you are balancing by doing the inverse operations on both sides. Okay, and now I'll do the check. Check if the solution satisfies the equation. So I'll go back to the original equation. I'll do this in red. We are saying that the solution is negative 12, so I'm going to replace x here with negative 12. Dividing by 3, add 2 is equal to negative 2. Is that true? Well, negative 12 divided by 3 is negative 4. Add 2, that is indeed negative 2. So our check has shown that the solution is correct. Okay. So let's do a slightly tr more tricky one. Solve for x. We don't have any brackets here, so we don't need to do step one. We don't have x on both sides, so we don't need to do step two. So we can start doing inverse operations straight away. Now, you need to be careful here because you have a fraction line. And normally you are trying to do um, reverse bed mass first, but because these are grouped here, the top and the bottom line, you need to get rid of this divide by 5 first. So, what is the opposite of dividing by 5? It is timesing by 5. So, to get rid of that, the inverse operation is times by 5. I'm going to times by 5, 4x plus 3 on 5 is equal to negative 2, and I'm timesing by 5 to balance it to draw an arrow there to indicate that I've balanced. Well, timesing something by 5 that's already been divided by 5 cancels out. So all I'm left with on the left-hand side is 4x plus 3. And I've got negative 2 times by 5 on the other side, which is negative 10. Now that I've gotten rid of the fractions, I can go in my reverse bed mass order. I don't have any subtractions, but I do have an addition. So what's the opposite of adding 3? It's taking 3, so 4x plus 3, and I need to take 3 to get rid of the positive 3. But to keep it balanced, I also need to take 3 on the right-hand side. It's balanced, I can indicate that with an arrow. So 4x take 3 plus 3, uh, 4x plus 3 take 3, well plus 3 take 3 is 0, so all I've got left on the left-hand side is 4x. And negative 10 take 3 is negative 13. What's happening between 4 and the x? It's a multiplication. What's the opposite of multiplying by 4? Dividing by 4. So 4x divided by 4 in a block. And to keep it balanced, I need to um, divide negative 13 by 4 also. 4 on 4 cancels out. So you have, you have x left on the left-hand side and negative 13 on 4, which you can't cancel down, so you can just leave it, okay? So that's the answer for that one. Let's double check if it's correct. 4 lots of negative, 4 lots of x, which we have said is negative 13 on 4, plus 3 on 5 is equal to negative 2, 
four, these fours cancel out. So you've got negative 13 plus 3 on 5 is equal to negative 2. What's negative 13 plus 3? It's negative 10. Is negative 10 divided by 5 negative 2? Yes, that's correct. So the answer must be x is equal to negative 13 on 4. Last one, and hopefully the most difficult. So now we have brackets. So we have to do step one, expand and collect like terms. So we'd use our bracket expansion rules, 6 times by 2 plus 6 times by negative x. So 6 lots of 2 is 12, 6 times by negative x is negative 6x, and then I've got plus 5x. It's equal to 3, now negative 7 times by x and negative 7 times by 3. Negative 7 times by x is negative 7x. Negative 7 times by 3 is negative 21. Now I have to collect like terms. 12, negative 6 plus 5x. Well, negative 6 plus 5x is going to be negative 1x. So we've got 12 take 1x on the left-hand side. We don't have any x terms on the right, but we do have like terms, which are numbers. So 3 take 21 is negative 18, and we've still got the negative 7x left here. Now, we can't solve any equations if we've got unknowns on both sides, so we need to get rid of um, the x on one side, okay? So I, want, I like to have my x's on the left-hand side of the equal sign, so I need to get rid of this negative 7x on the right-hand side. What's the opposite of taking 7x, adding 7x. So I need to add 7x to both sides to keep it balanced and get rid of the 7x, negative 7x on the right hand side. Okay, so it's balanced there. Well, it's 12. Negative x plus 7x is going to be positive 6x. Negative 18, negative 7x plus 7x is 0, so all you've got is negative 18 on the right-hand side. Okay, I need to get rid of this positive 12. What's the opposite of positive 12? Negative 12. I've still got the 6x on the left-hand side, take 18. What did I do to get rid of the positive 12? I took 12, so it's balanced on both sides. 12 take 12 is 0, so all I've got left on the left-hand side is 6x. Negative 18, take 12, negative 30. What is 6 doing to x? It's multiplying by 6. What's the opposite of multiplying 6? Dividing by 6. I need to divide both sides by 6 to keep it balanced. 6 cancels to 1, so you've got x on the left-hand side. Negative 30 divided by 6 is negative 5. So that is a more tricky one, but if you follow the rules, you should be fine. Let's see if it um, was a correct solution by substituting. 6, 2, so we are 2 take, and we are saying x is negative 5, so it's 2 take negative 5, plus 5, lots of negative 5, is equal to 3 take 7, negative 5 plus 3. So we can deal with the brackets first, 6. 2 take negative 5 is 2 plus 5. 2 plus 5 is 7. 5 times by negative 5 is negative 25. 3. Negative 7 times by negative 5 plus 3 is negative 2. 6 times by 7 is 42. Take 25 is equal to 3. What's negative 7 times by negative 2? That's positive 14. What's 42 take 25? I can't even do the addition in my head. 42 take 25 is 17. What's 3 plus 14? 17. Both sides agree. Therefore, the solution of x is equal to negative 5 is correct. So that's another more tricky example of how you apply the rules to solve linear equations. Hopefully that helps you out, and I'll see you in the next video.